Hi. In this video, I'm just going to go over the differences in design between the two cylinder heads on the Porsche M96 engines. There are two fundamental versions of the engine, one of them that's used in the GT3 and the Turbo, and another one that's used in all the Carrera models, so C2, C4, C4S. Now the GT3 and Turbo engine, which the head is this one we can see here, was derived from the early air-cooled engines as used in the 964-993, but also from the GT1 engine where it had the water-cooled heads. So I'll just briefly go over the design of this. So here we have the, the main head. So here we have the heads, obviously one side, so three cylinders with the two valves per cylinder. This one doesn't have the valves installed or springs, as you can see. This bolts down onto the block or onto the, the cylinders in this case, using 12 large bolts. Then on top of that is the camshaft carrier. So this is basically what holds the, the tappets. You can see the tappets sit underneath there. They're not actually in on this one, underneath the camshafts. And the camshafts are then held in place with these covers on here. And this is the variable valve timing gear. So this is the, the and these are the two camshafts. We've only got the variable valve timing on the inlet. So this is the, the exhaust one with fixed timing on here. And then there's a pad here, which is um, a rubbing pad for the, for the chain. The chain runs in this chain guide, which is bolted onto the cylinder and is tensioned with this tensioner, which goes in through here. And then there's a cover with a gasket on it. So cams held in place with these covers, which are screwed down. The cam carrier itself attaches to the head using 18 bolts. These have to be quite big, strong bolts because obviously they're, they're holding the camshafts in place. And there's also a gasket which goes on the cylinder head. So 18 bolts plus a gasket for that. Then a further 16 bolts to hold the camshafts down with an additional two for the timing gear. Then there's also another five for the rest of the timing gear and the pads. So these bolts on here, and also there's another three bolts on here. Then the cover, which goes on top, is here. So this just goes on and seals the top of the camshafts. Now on this engine, the cam carrier, this part over here, all of these covers, clamps for the camshaft and this cover are all matched together. You can see there's a number inscribed on all of them. So that number must match on all the covers. It doesn't actually on, on this one because I've put the, the wrong parts on here. So you'll see the number on here. These are actually for the other head. I've just put them on for the purpose of the video. So the, the chain guide is screws onto the, the block using four bolts with a gasket underneath and a gasket on top. So in total for that lot, there's around 73 bolts and five different gaskets. And because of the way the engine is designed, the head is the same for both sides. So there's one head casting. The chain guide is different for each side. The cam carrier is different for each side and the cover is different for each side. The reason for this is that the the heads and the cams are all driven from the same end of the engine. So the this side has got to be the bottom side on both. You can see this is where the oil drain returns are. So there's a different, a different design for those. So in total, there are seven different castings. So there's one head casting, two chain guides, two cam carriers, and two covers. And there are nine parts which are matched together. So the, the six covers this, the cam carrier and the cover. So that's the, the basic design for the GT3 and the turbo engine. Then moving across to the Carrera engine, which does fundamentally the same thing. We can see what they've done on here. They've integrated the chain guide with the head. So by doing this, they get rid of the separate casting for the chain guide. It also gets rid of the two gaskets that are required for the chain guide. It still bolts down to the block using four bolts. So that doesn't change. 
So if we look inside in here, you'll see that the, the caps, whilst there are two caps for holding the camshaft down on here, the rest of the caps are actually integrated into the cam cover. So they're machined here. You can see where the bolts are for the caps there. So by doing that, they've managed to basically remove six caps from there. And whereas on the GT3 engine, we have this large cam carrier casting for holding the tappets. On this one, we have a much smaller casting which just holds the tappets. So that then sits inside the head. As you can see, it's obviously not in here. And it means that this can just bolt down with relatively small diameter bolts because it's not got any great force on it. It's just locating the tappets. So as a result of this, on this engine, as with the GT3, there are 12 main bolts for holding the head down. So there's four around each cylinder, plus four bolts for the chain guide. Then there are 15 small diameter bolts, which hold the cam carrier to the head, plus a further four bolts for holding the camshaft down and three bolts for holding the timing gear. So this is the adjustable timing. It's much simpler than on the GT3 engine. It has a solenoid here which simply moves the, the longer side of the chain between either the top side or the bottom side to adjust the timing on the inlet camshaft. And then on the cover itself, there are 23 small diameter bolts. So in total, that means we've gone down from around 73 bolts, many of which are quite large bolts, down to 61 bolts and gone down from five gaskets down to just the one. In terms of castings, there are now only three castings required. There's one casting required for the cylinder head, one for the tappet chest and one for the cover. And what they did on this engine, by driving the camshafts from opposite ends of the engine, it means they can use the same head design on both sides of the engine. What they do is they just machine it slightly differently in terms of where the tensioner goes. So here we have the, the tensioner going on this side. And if it was the head for the other side, the tensioner would go in through here instead. And for the scavenge pump, the pump just rotates because the camshafts rotating in opposite directions. So the camshafts are a different design for the two sides. But in terms of castings, it's much simplified. So those are the, the main differences. It's a much simplified design, fewer castings, fewer parts which are matched together because on this one we have the two caps here are matched with the head and the cover. So we've basically only got four parts which are matched together instead of nine. Those are the main differences between the two. I hope that was interesting. Thanks for watching.